Hey, how's it going? It's been a hot minute since so I've made a PC, so why don't we try building one that is well below Starfield's recommended requirements, and uh, let's see if it'll run. At the heart of our system, we have itself an Intel Core i5-3470. This is an 11-year-old CPU at this point, only supporting four cores and four threads, uh, with a base clock of 2.3.2 gigahertz. This little CPU was actually really good for the time when it launched, uh, but it's definitely outdated as far as uh, performance goes nowadays. The really good thing about these older CPUs is they still support Windows 10, unlike a lot of AMD CPUs like the Phenom series. I picked up the CPU motherboard and RAM combo for only 30 bucks off of Craigslist. Not too bad. And the motherboard is a P8H61 board. This is a third generation Intel core board that is well over 10 years old at this point. It does support PCI 3.0, but it's got random ports like this COM1 port, which I have no clue what it's for. But it does support TPM, which is pretty cool because that means you can you can get it to run Windows 11, but in my case, I'm just gonna run Windows 10 with it. It came with, uh, bundled with eight gigabytes of DD3 DIMR memory, <laughs> DDR3 memory. And, uh, well, I'm hopeful that it runs off eight gigabytes. I'm not very optimistic, so we might have to throw another eight gigabytes uh, just to make sure that it'll run. For a graphics card, we have a GTX 970. These were amazing graphics cards back in the day. Uh, and they're still pretty potent today. Uh, they had a bit of con controversy around them because of the fact that they had a bit of false advertising as far as the total memory capacity, but honestly, that's, uh, that's pretty irrelevant today, especially given the price. You can pick these up locally or on eBay for anywhere from 40 to 50 bucks. And if you're on a tight budget, these are definitely worth the money. I'll be installing Windows 10 on a 256 gigabyte SSD. And this cost me around 20 bucks brand new. And you can actually find NVMe drives for $20. It is crazy to think about. And for the case, I picked up this special edition Wanzi uh, basket series case. This case features an open air design and has plenty of room to throw all your components inside. Plus, it features a nifty and carrying handle for uh, easy mobility of your computer. This is their Safeway limited edition model, and because it's so rare, it even has a couple stickers of authenticity to prove its legitimacy. But that's enough talking, let's, uh, let's actually get to some building and some playing. All right, so after quite some fiddling around with, I've come to the conclusion that you can't run this game with eight gigabytes of RAM, so I'm gonna have to get 16 gigabytes. I'll be right back. All right, so I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM here. Uh, you can find these pretty cheaply on eBay for like 20 bucks for DDR3 memory. Uh, I would suggest going this route instead of trying to fiddle around with eight gigabytes. I think eight gigabytes is officially obsolete. Also, a quick random note with this motherboard, you can't install more RAM with this graphics card installed. There's like zero room uh, to get the RAM out or to open these uh, things up with the graphics card installed. This was, uh, I know it's an older motherboard, but this was definitely <laughs> not well engineered or not well thought out. All right, with the uh, eight gigabytes removed and the 16 gigabytes installed, let's see how well this does. All right, so with 16 gigabytes of RAM installed, don't mind the 1080 and 2500K, that's for someone else. Uh, this system actually runs Starfield. I'm really shocked. Uh, besides the whole eight gigabytes of RAM hiccup, which clearly is obsolete uh, for modern games, that was the only problem I ran with the system. It ran Windows 10 fine and it booted up Starfield. And under normal gameplay, the game runs fairly consistent. It's not perfect, you're getting around 30 FPS at 720p-ish medium settings, uh, but for the most part, you could beat Starfield with this if you if you were looking to be, uh, play the game on an extreme budget. It's only when you decide to mess around with the game, like, you know, spawning 10,000 milk cartons on the moon for some reason. That's, that's when the frame rate really tanks and becomes unplayable, but if you're not doing that, you could realistically beat Starfield on this system, which is uh, very shocking considering that this is like the most intense game or intensive game uh, that has been recently released. I'll put a total build cost on the screen right now, but it, once you add everything up, it came to around $100. 
Uh, some of the parts you can find for cheaper or a little more expensive. There's always some variance when it comes to buying used parts. But for the most part, you can expect this kind of performance to cost around a hundred-ish dollars. And uh, that's still a little more that I like to see, especially given that, uh, given how old these parts are. But hey, that's just the world we live in right now. Thank you so much for watching and hope you have a good one. Take care now. Bye.